Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Antonio Garrido knows what it takes to be a leader. Today, he'll share those tips with us. Antonio, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation, Bill. I do appreciate it. I love your show, so I do genuinely appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, and it's mutual because, as I told you before the show, I love your book. And you've written a book called My Daily Leadership. And right at the beginning, it says this book is different. Now, that's tough to do because there's so many books on leadership. So please tell us why. Well, I think more than anything else, it's different because we want the readers to actually do something at the end of having read the book or leave uh, even whilst they are um, working through the book. Um, there are lots of books on leadership, whether there are lots of books on any topic where we're, we're just, and this is my third book, but all the way through this book, we are constantly asking the reader to engage with the book and to do activities and to reflect and uh, a journal and to write things down. And so it's somewhere between a book, I think, and a workbook, if there is such a thing. Um, and, and it's different also because it doesn't at any time try and express to the reader that they've got things wrong and they need to think this way. They need to do this thing. They, what we figure out or what we believe is that most people know what they need to do. Most leaders, um, are tremendous leaders or they have the potential to be and it's stamped on their dna right it's not the best leaders are just born with the leadership gene right we we believe that the best leaders the capability is with all of us each one of us and so we're not um asking the reader to believe our methodology our processes our uh, vision uh, we're asking the leader to uh, figure out from their own experience how they need to improve. The main principle, I think, of the book is that wisdom comes through evaluated experience, not just time served. So it's about having the the reader. I keep getting few, confused between reader and leader because they're so similar. It's about having the reader, who is the leader, uh, spend much more time reflecting, thinking, and analyzing their own performance. So I think that's why it's more than just a regular passive, read the book and hope that things will get better. We actually want the reader <laughs> to get actively involved in the book. The chapters are organized such that there are exercises to do all the way through. And what I love about your book, it's more, um, to analogize it uh, compared to a conversation, it's more like a conversation where there's a back and forth dialogue rather than one person just talks and the other person just listens and nods. Uh, it really made me think, and as I said to you before, I know there's some messages through the book that I'm going to keep with me for years and be asking me the questions that you pose during the the course of the book. Now, you, one of the things you urge us there is, A, to keep a journal, but even more so, you say, to keep it by hand. Why is that so important in today's age of, you know, technology? You know, this is probably the biggest obstacle or challenge, let's say speed bump, perhaps, <laughs> pinch point, with uh, the most of, not all of, but certainly a large percentage of our clients struggle with. I get entirely billed that we're in a very <laughs> technologically advanced area, a world, um, and there are apps for absolutely everything. Well, we have an app too, right? We do have a learning platform. We are incredibly technologically advanced too, but we actually want people to sit and write out longhand by hand some of their thoughts, some of their musings, some of their reflective and reflexive practice, some of their um, evaluated experiences. Here's why. There, were, there has been lots and lots of studies. We mentioned in the book one particular study done by, um, I think it was the University of California, that they watched um, students um, in the lecture theatres 
Some of them were there with their laptops. We've all seen, you, you can all picture that image, and they're typing away furiously. Some people are doing um, more like uh, mind maps where they're drawing on pieces of paper and they're drawing images more than anything else. And we do talk about the power of mind maps in the book. And some people are actually by hand writing stuff out. Now, the reason that most people want to be able to type their, <laughs> their uh, daily journal is because they know that they can type faster than they can write. Nearly everybody can type faster than they write, apart perhaps from my dad, who's a <laughs> very much search and peck typer, but that's because he, his English isn't very uh, 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 very well developed because he's Spanish national. But here's the problem. When we type stuff, we don't learn it. We don't memorize it. We don't um, learn anything from it. Because what happens when we write is there's a whole feedback loop, which is really, really, really important because we need to first in our minds edit what we need to write. So we need to be, so we, we, we become very much more selective with the words that we're going to choose. Our brains then have to tell our arms and hands and fingers to write the word. As the words are revealing themselves on the page, our brain sees them and reinforces that's what we meant to say. And then we have this re, this, this feedback loop, which is being very selective with the words, then creating the words, then to ourselves rationalizing those were the words that con confirming those were the words that we wanted to use and retention, cognition, are all improved. So when they looked at the student results of those that wrote out their notes by hand versus those that did mind map versus those that typed, um, all of the all of the A players, all of the star students were those that got a pen out and wrote. Now, as I say, we have each one of our days, we also have on our LMS, which is our learning management system, we have an app where the we reinforce everything that we ask them to do every day with a, a video, and uh, but we need them to uh, get their journal out, sit down with a pen, think about something, and write something. And retention is very, very much improved, and speed, speed of development is very much improved. Antonio, you had asked a question early in the book, and it certainly made me pause and think about it and scared me a bit. You say, would you have employed you? In other words, if uh, we were a candidate for our own company, would we have employed Bill Horan or Antonio Garrido? And I, I'm wondering the type of reactions you get from people because you're dealing with quality leaders who obviously want to be better. And that, that must be kind of a scary question. Yes, I think that when we ask our new leaders, well, our, our new clients, we asked them a few questions, Bill. Um, I'll get to that one in a second. But first of all, I'll say to them, um, when we're sort of auditing them, their organization, the culture, learning, leadership, and so on, I'll, I'll ask them, um, how many people do you have working for the organization? And let's imagine they can say anywhere between six and 60 and 606,000, right? So whatever the number is, I'll then say, okay, so on a standard distribution bell chart, you've probably got 20% A players, 60% B players, and 20% C players. Makes sense. They always agree. <laughs> and I say, okay, well, tell me about one of your C players. And they'll go, oh, George. I say, okay, <laughs> tell me a little bit about George. And then they'll tell me about George. And then I say, well, tell me about another C player. And then they'll say, Mary. I say, okay, tell me about Mary. And then I'll say, tell me one more. And they'll say, Tom. So I said, okay, George, Mary, and Tom, how long has George been with you? six years. How long has Mary been with you? Three years. How long has Tom been with you? Oh, he's quite new. He's only been with us for six months. I'll say, okay, then here's my question for you. You've got these, you've got some A players, you've got lots of B players, and you've also got some C players. Those C players, um, Mr. or Mrs. CEO, did you, um, did you hire them like that or did you make them like that? That's a tricky question for a CEO to deal with, because if they hired them like that, then that doesn't speak well for their recruitment and talent uh, solutions. If they have made them like that, then that doesn't speak well for their culture. And if they don't know, then that doesn't speak well for the CEO. Either way, the challenge is that the people that they are recruiting and therefore their culture 
Whose responsibility is it? Well, it's their own responsibility. Now, the reason I asked those kind of questions fairly early, Bill, is that it's very easy for a leader to think, well, I've been in place for five years and the company's doing okay, so I would have recruited myself. And I say, okay, but are you the perfect finished article? Are you improving? So, oh, yes, I'm improving all of the time. I said, okay, terrific. How long have you been in place? Eight years. Great. If you project backwards eight years and you were in interviewing that person today with all of those weaknesses and gaps and blind spots, would you have recruited you? And do you know what? At least 90% of the time they say no, or at least those with good self-awareness. Those that say, yes, I would definitely have uh, recruited myself and I am perfect in every single way then we can't we can't coach those people we can't help those people we can't develop those people because self awareness is is a critical leadership skill if that makes sense antonio so, I, that's why i love your book so much it's answers like that and we want to find out more but at this point in the show we like to let our audience know that you're listening to the secrets of success on the voice of nassau community college 90.3 whpc i'm your host bill horan our guest today is antonio Garrido, G-A-R-R-I-D-O. His book is My Daily Leadership. And Antonio would ask you the website where we can find out more information. Sure. It's www.mydailyleadership.com. That's mydailyleadership, all one word, dot com. And there are stacks of resources there. And to our audience, again, if you're just tuning in, if you missed part of it or want to hear the show again, you can go to nccradio.org. That's nccradio.org. Just look for the Secrets of Success podcast and then the topic, My Daily Leadership. There's no cost. You can recommend it to friends. You can listen to it any time of the day that you like. And I think these lessons will resonate more and more as you hear them. And then, of course, you want to read My Daily Leadership because it's going to up your game considerably. You mentioned something called a 3C, as in the letter C, assessment interview. What are those three words that begin with C and why are they important? Well, they're important because they help inform the organization. It comes back to this talent management piece, who they should be bringing onto the team, right? Every leader's responsibility is to grow the depth and, and breadth of their bench. So what we want to do is make sure that as the B players and C players leave us, then we are replacing them with A players. Let me just, before I answer that though, Bill, talk about, just add a little more color to the previous question, which was, we often ask our leaders to create for themselves their own report card. How well did you do yesterday? How well did you do the day before? Will you always give yourself, always, always, under every circumstance, A star top, top, top rating. And of course, those that say yes, we can't help, but those that recognize that they do have some gaps and and, and some um, shortcomings, then, you know, we can, we can help those individuals. So we ask them to produce for themselves their own report card on a daily basis, which is at the end of every day, ask themselves, what would my leadership report card look like today? Would I give myself straight A's across the board? Would there be a couple of B's in there or the odd C? and then decide to do something about it. Okay, so why do I mention that? Well, when we're looking to interview, when we're looking to recruit, and when we're looking at ourselves, we should be measuring ourselves against a number of criteria. We should be measuring ourselves against capability. How, how good, how able am I to do this job? Um, credibility, what is my CV or resume look like? What does my learning look like? What does my experience look like? So we've got something to do with capability, something to do with credibility, and then something to do with chemistry. So if I'm recruiting for one of our clients or they're recruiting for themselves, they should make an assessment on capability, credibility, and chemistry. And if they're just looking at themselves, it should be how capable am I, um, how how is my experiences growing and my learning to build my credibility? And what am I doing in terms of the core values and the culture of the company? That's chemistry. Now, here's the thing. Most people, most organizations, they get down to the last two or three candidates 
And invariably, they hire to chemistry. They just kind of think, do I like the cut of this gentleman's jib, right? Do I like this individual? And chemistry, whilst it's one of the elements, it's not the most important. We have to think about capability, credibility, and chemistry. Now, there are in the full model, which you would learn in the program, there are some more C's because we want to know about capability, credibility, and chemistry related to customers and colleagues and capital. So the full model is lots of C's, but for the purposes of the book, we'll leave it at those three. Well, those three are easy to remember. And again, it's an interesting challenge because I look at that and that's easy enough to go down quickly and say, am I capable? Am I credible? And do I have the chemistry with the people? And as I said, I, I love the way you bring it out because it's easy, it's direct and to the point. And I think anybody reading this says, wait a minute, if you go through a few of these drills, you are going to be a better leader. You just have to be, unless you're the, the perfect person and there's very few who fit into that category. Well, here's, here's the thing, Bill. Can I just add to that very, very Absolutely. Very I, I did a talk um, just before COVID. So it was a while ago now, but COVID you know, affected a lot of the talks that we do, of course. But I did a talk to maybe 500 leaders from all various sizes of organization from lots of different markets, from lots of different geographies. So there were about, you know, a few hundred, 500 leaders there. And um, I asked, I asked them all by a show of hands, I said, who here has no blind spots? And thankfully, nobody, <laughs> nobody put their arms up. So that was <laughs> in their hands in the air. So that was a good, uh, that was a good start. And Obviously, the people that come to these kinds of talks are fairly developmental anyway. They recognize that they're trying to learn something and trying to grow and develop, and that's terrific. So I asked, okay, great. So there's 500 people here who all know that they have some blind spots. That's wonderful. Now, if you'll just take a minute and write down what they are. Now, that's an impossible task, isn't it? Because if they knew what they were, then they wouldn't be blind spots. But everybody recognizes that they must have some blind spots. The challenge is... They don't know what they are. And if they don't know what they are, then, well, they don't know how to do anything about them. Neither do they know what, how badly that those particular blind spots are affecting them. So more than anything, I think the book is about this, this growth that's, that's built on the self-awareness path. So coming back to, would you have recruited you? The answer is always no. <laughs> Are all of your people perfect? No. And well, who, wh whose responsibility is that? Where does the responsibility lie? I often talk to so many leaders and they're constantly bemoaning the sales guys aren't doing well, the management team aren't doing well, the people don't trust them. And they'll go, they'll say, on time in full is terrible, customer service is terrible. And I go, okay, terrific, terrific. And whose responsibility are those things? And they'll say, well, VP of sales. I go, well, who recruited VP of sales? Who's training and developing VP of sales? My coach, tell you a super quick story. It's in the book, Bill. My coach is a fourth generation submarine commander. So you can imagine, captain of a submarine, right? His father was and his father was and his father was. And they don't give out those captaincies easily, I imagine. Anyway, he asked me once, he said, let me tell you a quick story, Antonio. I was in bed, my quarters at 4 a.m. And at 4 a.m. in the morning, he was asleep, the captain was asleep. And on the other side of the ship, they call it a ship. Oh, sorry, they call it a boat. The other side of the boat, it's a submarine, but they call it a boat. The other side of the boat, um, a young engineer was welding a pipe. Now, submarines are full of sharp edges and pipes under enormous pressures and temperatures. I mean, it's a very dangerous place. And anyway, unfortunately, this young chap was welding uh, to repair a pipe. And unfortunately, he 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 killed himself. He died in the process of, of, of doing this uh, repair. And they were somewhere under the Arctic Circle and had been tracking red submarines for about six months and trying to stay undetected. So we now have this young seaman who is now uh, deceased and they can't do anything about it other than unfortunately put him in deep freeze till they get to port in a few months. But anyway, the point was this. He said, whose fault was it? Who, where does the responsibility lie of this chap 
having killed himself at 4 a.m. whilst I'm asleep in my bunk. Now, the answers could be, well, it's the individual's fault, or it could be, well, the person that was on watch that night, or it could be the person that told them to do the, the task, to carry out the task. It could be the person that was supposed to be supervising him. It could be the person that trained him. There's a million different answers to that question. And whilst I was considering it, and I said, uh, maybe that person's line manager, the direct report, the person that they report to, is it maybe their fault? And he said, no, it's my fault. And I said, yeah, but you were, sh- you were asleep <laughs> at the time. He said, look, when you take on the responsibility of the submarine, you take on the responsibility of everything that happens in it. And he said, all leaders must understand that the number one rule of leadership is it's always my fault, the good and the bad. <laughs> so, so when we talk to leaders and say, what's frustrating you around here? And they say, oh, sales or top line or bottom line or cash or whatever. It's interesting how few of them take responsibility for that. And I think it's interesting too, how they, once you say it, it almost shines the light on them and brings that right back to them. But we want to talk about more more about that after the break. But again, I'd like our audience to know if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is Antonio Garrido, G-A-R-R-I-D-O. His book is My Daily Leadership. And Antonio, we'd ask you the website where people can find out more about the book. It's www. all the W's, right? <laughs> MyDailyLeadership.com. All one word, MyDailyLeadership.com. And if you didn't hear the whole show or if you'd like to hear it again, you can go to nccradio.org. Look for Secrets of Success. Look for Antonio Garrido, My Daily Leadership. And at any time of day, and no matter where you are in the world, you can listen to the podcast of the show Uh, Take your own notes on it and then go out and get My Daily Leadership and watch your leadership skills zoom up. Now, one of the big things in the book, and of course, I said this to you right before, I said, this is what I'm going to remember from your book probably 10 years from now. You have a question or questions, depending how you wanted to uh, phrase it, that we should ask ourselves every day if we're a leader. And you talk a lot about this in the book, so I'd like you to pose that question what should we leaders ask themselves every day? Well, I confess I didn't, uh, this wasn't (laughs) something that I devised, but I have been incredibly lucky, incredibly fortunate, and it's more by luck than judgment, have worked for some world-class phenomenal leaders, which I guess is how my interest in leadership first developed. And I've worked for some very, very large and well-established global brands. But I had a boss that came to me one day and he would always actually, he would always search me out in the canteen. There was a staff canteen. There were many thousands of people that worked at the organization, but we always seemed to coordinate our lunches. Anyway, we're having a sandwich and he asked me whether or not I had um, earned my money today, which was a bizarre, <laughs> bizarre question. And then he asked me as a supplementary, did I try my best today? And I said, Andy, they're, they are they're pretty good questions. Why do you ask? Basically, fishing for time, right, Bill? <laughs> and he said, well, they're the two questions I ask myself every day. Did I earn my money today? And did I do my best? So I took a moment and I said, well, I- I'm going to have to say yes, Andy, because I came in early. I've worked very hard. <laughs> Um, I've attended lots of meetings, I've made some good decisions, and I think good things are going to happen from them. So I, I'm going to say, yes, I, yes, I did. And then he said, to which one? To which question? I said, uh, to both questions. And he said, well, have another run at it. And have another run at it meant have another thing in his language, right? So I thought, okay, crikey, maybe these questions are trickier than I thought. So I thought, yeah, but Andy, I... I I definitely earned my money today. He said, do you earn your money every day? I said, yeah, I think so. He said, good, that's the right answer. You should always, every day on your way home, when you get in your car, back in the day when we used to drive to offices, right? (laughs) And when you readjust your mirror to make sure you're reversing out of the spot that you're not going to hit anybody, when you look in the mirror, you'll see your face and ask yourself, did you earn your money today? And the answer should always be yes. If it's not yes, ninety at least 90% of the time, 
go find another job. So I said, okay, good. I got that one right. And he said, now, the other question is, did you try your best today? And I said, yeah, but Andy, I try my best every day. No, he said, did you do your best every day? I said, well, I do my best every day. He said, well, I don't know that that's possible, is it? I said, isn't it? So he said, well, be- what does best mean? Best is a very high bar. Imagine if you were a 100-meter you know, sprinter. Every single day when you pull on your Nike second skin pants and you go out to train or you go out to race, do you do you hit your personal best every single day? You get faster every single day? Of course, the answer is no. You try to do that every day, but you don't do your best every day. But that question of, did I do my best? No, probably not my best. Not the best that I am absolutely capable of, that if my children were stuck under my car, I would lift my car up to free them. Probably not that level every day. And he said, yeah, perfect. That's the right answer. That means then that forces us to say, well, where could I have done better? It forces us to reflect. It forces us. This wisdom comes from evaluated experience. It forces us to evaluate maybe what we could have done or should have said or should not have said, right? Maybe a a meeting we could have run better, an email we could have done better. So Did you earn your money today? The answer should always be yes, otherwise get another job. Did you do your very best today? Probably not, but recognize where the gaps were and resolve to do something about them tomorrow. Antonio, what I love about that, and I was thinking as you were answering, that applies to the Cub Scout leader who may have four little Cub Scouts that he or she is talking to, the assistant principal, the foreman who's over two other workers, Or the CEO who has literally uh, hundreds or thousands of workers under him and stockholders depending on him, et cetera, et cetera. If they can answer that question, then you know what? If we will certainly no baseball player can hit a home run every day, much less four home runs. But some occasionally have done that or pitch a no hitter. If we can ask ourselves that question and just up our game five or 10 percent. Wow, would we change the world and how many wonderful things. Again, I want to thank you so much for being with us. The time goes quickly when we have a guest like you. I want our audience to know our guest has been Antonio, G-A-R-R-I-D-O, Garrido. His book is My Daily Leadership and the website once again. www.mydailyleadership.com. There's loads of assets you can download. I love this book and I highly recommend it to our audience. I'd like our audience to know that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.